place called Raw Cliff, very atmospheric. Um, let's get our bearings. So this is the start of the Dutch River. I'll show you this in a minute, but as we move downstream in that direction, under the bridge, the river flows pretty much in a straight line all the way to Gaul. And that was the Dutch River that Cornelius Vermeiden constructed. Um, if you go upstream, uh, maybe five miles to Thorn. Yeah. Uh, Thorn is where the river used to cross from Thorn into the and then head off towards the River Trent, and it was it was diverted this way by Vermeiden. We spoke in a previous video about a channel that the Romans constructed, which went across this flood bank here in that direction to the River Eyre. Now you can see over there is the Eyre and Calder Navigation Canal, which was built after that channel, obviously, that the Romans constructed uh, to take the water for their own purposes to create a uh, navigation link from the Don to the Eyre. So um, you can see where the river's in flood as a result of Storm Babbitt. Uh, you can see where the river's been up the flood bank uh, in the very near recent past. Um, so, Oracle of the River Don. Turn to the camera, please, sir. So, tell us a little bit more about um, the river here. Just at this point, on this bend, as you came to the bend, the channel leading to the River Air broke away. It went in that direction. You can see when the river's lower where there used to be an old sluice obviously that's gone it's been gone some some considerable time but the, but the dutch river which vermoyden constructed basically started at that corner yeah and took the water down this channel in, in a straight line in a straight line right down to the ooze at, at Gould. although if you look on a map there is a slight kink in that straight line, which does call into question whether he was heading in the wrong direction, realised, and had to change direction slightly, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the uh, engineering techniques were very primitive, obviously, in those days. Most of them, most of this will have been constructed using... Uh, uh, the Dutch river, river would have been constructed using spades. Not JCBs. I don't think there were many JCBs around in 1632. <laughs> uh, you can see, like, from the size of it, I mean, it scales hard probably on the video, but it's, what, it's, uh, 20 metres wide? 15, uh, 20 metres? I guess that's more than that. Maybe a bit more, yeah. 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 It's wide anyway, it's a lot of digging. So how far down from here to Ghoul? Roughly about four, four or five miles. Yeah, four or five miles. So it's a lot of digging. And it, and the urgency, there would have been considerable urgency to get it finished because obviously having having had to pay out huge amounts of restitution to uh, to landowners for the damage that the flood had caused, Vermoiden would have been keen to get it completed before there was another flood. Yeah. So if if this channel was dug here, from Thorn to here, by Vermoiden. No, it wasn't dug by the Romans. By the Ro so the Romans did the, this the bit to here. Channel, yeah. Yes. Uh, and then the, obviously the, 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 the subsequent bit that we've talked about that goes into the River Air. So Vermoiden had nothing to do with the river up to this point. No, and he may, he may no, there's no evidence to suggest he did. He may have, have tried to widen that channel to accommodate uh, the uh, huge extra volume that would be going down it when when the river was uh, when the, the river was blocked at Thorn. So yeah, so he blocked the river at Thorn, yeah, that, and then so Vermoiden blocked the river at Thorn, stopped it going into the River Trent realised the mistake that or the impact that had on the landowners around this area in terms of flooding and then constructed this five mile Dutch river stretch. Yeah. 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 So that stretch between here and Thorn upstream is very straight. It wouldn't have always been like that, would it? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it was, uh, obviously the Romans would have been, oh, course they built straight to, rivers, didn't they? Like straight to roads. To canal as, as yeah. much as, 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 as can be. So there was not I much mean, point in meandering no, it. No, I mean, if you go and have a look at the Care Canal for uh, that they built, uh, or the Fosdyke Canal, you'll see that yeah. they are uh, as straight as they well, possibly can. Well, that's what they did, didn't it? They did yeah. that with the roads as well. They built yeah. everything in straight lines. Yeah. The difference, okay. the difference here was that it was it was flow it was a flowing water whereas the, most of the canals that they built were uh, were were uh, rel relatively still yeah ponded water but so effectively between here and thorn upstream you've got pretty much a straight line river and from here to gaul downstream you've got at right angles almost another bit of straight river exactly. neither of which are very good in terms of like ecology and habitat and all the rest no, of it are they very uh, very sterile environments yeah so when we're when the river's like this in flood how do the fish how do the fish withstand the flow of the river you know how, why don't they get washed because there's no like refuge areas are there fish are adap adapted to uh, to to resist uh, the situation you know the flow situations what they do tend they do is tend to hug the bottom because the frictional effect of water, of water running over the over something uh, static yeah. is that it tends to slow it down a little bit so the fish lay as much as they possibly can on the bottom yeah. to uh, to reduce the the pressure on them yeah. but they'll they'll tuck into banks they they they're very adept at finding uh, niches to uh, uh, to to uh, find refuge in. Yeah, but it's not ideal ecologically It's not, not and ideal. Um, obviously, juvenile fish do get swept down and, and lost into the uh, estuary. There's no question about that. Yeah. But bear in mind that uh, that this area is not this this very canalised section of river. Um, apart from migratory fish um, and some uh, estuarine. Uh, species such as flounders and so on. That's not much. That's here. very, very, very much the uh, the extent of the fish population yeah, in yeah, this area. Yeah. I mean, this. The, the, I, I honestly have not never seen anybody trying to fish this section downstream of Thorn. Yeah. Excellent. Right. I'm just going to whiz up these steps and show you the Dutch River downstream from here on its way to Gaul. Excuse the loud traffic noise. Uh, it's quite a busy road, this. But uh, just very quickly while we're here. So there is the river upstream. There is the river downstream. As you can see, just a long straight line. All the way to go, apart from that little kink that we talked about. The reasons for which may be lost to history forever. So this is the Air and Calder Navigation Canal. It runs immediately adjacent to the River Don, the Dutch River, which is just the other side of those buildings there, in an almost direct parallel. The two watercourses are almost directly in parallel. They're both obviously man-made. Again, this one's straight, and again, you can see Ghoul in the distance there. Um, so where, where does this canal go to and come from? This canal goes up to, uh, eventually, up to Leeds. So it goes from Leeds to Ghoul, joins with the ooze in Ghoul, yeah? Yeah. Just up, uh, just upstream of Rawcliffe Bridge, uh, of Rawcliffe itself, um, there is, a, there is a, a canal called the New Junction Canal, which takes uh, traffic from the Air and Calder, up to the river Don, uh, the uh, river, the, up to the river Don, and the uh, and the South Yorkshire navigation, which takes it to Leeds. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. Takes it to Doncaster. Yeah. So the, this is connected. The flow of the river Don. Some some of the flow of the river Don actually ends up in the air and call the navigation. Just to cause confusion. Just to cause you know, more confusion. Which we yeah. should really be called the Air Cauldron Don Canal, really, shouldn't it? <laughs> So, as you were saying before, canals are often, uh, 
nearly always found very close to rivers. Why? Because the canals rely on uh, the canals rely on rivers to supply the water that they need. Yeah. I mean, many of these canals, uh, the owners of the canals built reservoirs to ensure that they were able to continue to navigate in dry weather. Yeah. And as you can see, there's a boat yard there. Yeah, these are very popular uh, uh, recreational navigations now, both the Air and Colden, uh, the New Junction and the South Yorkshire navigation are all very popular now. Yeah. Lots of, tra of ple pleasure craft cruise these waters. We'll just have a quick look upstream towards Leeds. So that where we were looking is downstream towards Goole and the River Ouse here. We're looking upstream towards Leeds. A few people fishing down here. This used, see? These used to be very, very busy canals, um, but over recent years, the um, amount of commercial traffic that they, uh, that, they that, that used to use these uh, these navigations declined right down to the point where, on the River Don, on the the uh, South Yorkshire navigation, there's just one commercial navigator operating now. Yeah. So yeah, you can see uh, there's the canal and there you can just see the river, the Dutch river. Beyond the river, we're looking over the uh, fields towards Thorn. Uh, yeah, interesting day weather-wise, quite atmospheric. Isn't it?